Okay, so in this video we're going to look at a couple of more basics with federal taxes. We're going to look at two specific things. We're going to look at um, filing status and deductions. So filing status and deductions and how they impact your taxes in a general way and then we can calculate specifics later. So the idea, here we have a federal tax table from 2021 for a single individual. They're making a hundred thousand dollars as their gross income they're taking away a standard deduction of 12550 So they're not paying taxes on that part of their gross income. So you subtract it out. And what's left is your AGI, your adjusted gross income, or your taxable income. Now on that income, $87,000, they are in the 24% marginal rate, right? which means that the top part of their income falls into this margin. So they pay 24% on all of the income that falls in this range right here. They pay 22% on all of the taxable income that falls in this range and all, and so on and so forth. So these are all for taxable income amounts, and these are the corresponding percents. This table works out the taxes that they pay in each bracket. So altogether, this individual pays a little over $15,000, and their effective tax rates, that's out of their taxable income in this case, it could be out of gross income depending who's calculating it. But here we're saying, all right, you pay $15,000, that's out of 87,450. That's all your taxable income. So you take that number, the total tax is paid, divided by taxable income, and that gives you a percent. They're paying $17,000 and 17% 17 of their taxable income. That's their effective tax rate. Now, what if you change your filing status? What if you're not single? This is a single individual. What if you're married? It's interesting that if you're married and your gross income is the same, you pay way less in taxes because your deduction is 25,100, so it's higher. It's so about double, and your taxable income is lower than it was as a single individual. And even more than that, the percentages down here are the same, but the brackets down here have shifted upward. And the higher those brackets, effectively, the less uh, marginal, uh, the less you'll pay in taxes, right? Because, for example, here, 74900 that falls in the 12% rate, rate right there. And here, 74,000 falls into 22% marginal rate. So you pay, uh, with, with a married filing status, you have to go higher in taxable income to pay the same marginal rate. So effectively, you pay less. And in the end, think about this, they pay essentially half the taxes. No, I'm sorry, not even close. Um, <laughs> what is that, 15 out of 8? Eight? 8 out of 15, okay, this is embarrassing. 8 out of 15 it's about 53%. Oh, so not not so awful. So about about a little over 50-60% in taxes. It's way less. Their effective tax rate is even lower. It's about 11%. So is that unfair? Well, it's interesting that the assumption we made was that two individuals come together and yes, comparatively, a gross income of a married couple, they're going to pay way less in taxes. However, if two single individuals come together, and this is where you can see the inspiration for the numbers. If two single individuals both have 100000 their gross income together would be 200000 Boom. Now, the way the math works out, look at this. At the very end, they pay $30,018. And look at that. That's exactly double of $15,009. So these tax brackets are actually created with that in mind. And I don't know if they all work out that way. We can play around with that to figure it out. But it seems here, at least, that... If you take $100,000, and maybe we can test it out in a second, and two people have 100000 together, it's 200000 In the end, they don't save really anything in taxes from this perspective. And there are other things to consider. So let's do one more. So let's say someone has a gross income of 75000 They pay 9487.5. So if we double 75000 a married couple, they would pay 150000 and 18, right, 18,975, let's have a formula and we'll divide that by two just to confirm, boom, we get the same taxes. So these tax brackets and filing status bracket, everything's set up so that um, you end up paying the same taxes as if you were an individual or married, you don't save anything directly. However, it is interesting to note that with equal incomes, if you have 150,000 again in gross income, as an individual, you pay 27,000 but a married couple with the same gross income will certainly pay less, right? 18000 is less than 27000 
So filing status does shift some things, but other things do equal out. What about standard deductions? This gets really interesting. We're not going to cover it too much in detail in this unit. We're just going to introduce some, some of the ways this could happen. What if you don't want a standard deduction? What if I just want to itemize my deductions? And here, itemized deductions. What does that even mean, right? So you make a list of all the things you can deduct from your gross income and put a number. If that number is more than your standard dedu deduction, it's going to be way better. So let's just assume for a moment that we're shifting from a standard deduction of 12,550 to an itemized deduction. Now, instead of paying 27,000, you can deduct 60,000 from your gross income and you only pay $15,000 in taxes. Now the tax rate is 17% and that's way better than 19%, right? So we'll talk about these in detail and um, there's, that's the tax law is always seems to be shifting. But the idea is any money you put towards your health or your house, be uh, used as a deduction on your gross income and that could drastically impact your effective tax rate and your taxes paid. This number can get very high. And yeah, you're spending the money on things, but you're, you're investing it into your future or into your health. And that's way better than paying the taxes with the standard deduction and then using that money to uh, save for your retirement or to pay for your health bills. And we'll talk more about that. But again, the idea is uh, save it and invest it before taxes so you don't pay tax on that money. So if I have $60,000, I'm deducting that from my gross income. Now I'm not going to pay any taxes on all that money. So I saved that percentage right there. All right, I hope this helped.